Hi guys. So I want to talk to you a little bit about Calvinism. I'm going to start this new series and each video I'm just going to run through little things and I'd like to go through the history of it, but I still have a lot to learn about what I would call the false religion of Calvinism or the cult of John Calvin. Um, you see, actually, you know, Calvinism is kind of like a derogatory term that it deserves because it is false. Um, but those who believe it and teach it, they might actually disguise it as Reformed theology. They'll say that the Reformation was all, you know, Calvinism. This is true Christianity. Um, so they say it's Reformed theology, but no, it's, it's Calvinism, okay? It's, it's the cult of a man named John Calvin. And, you know, just like easy believism heretics will say that they'll disguise their theology as free grace theology, but no, it's a perversion of the gospel, it's easy believism is what it really is. So, you know, people will try to hide behind these different names and try to make it sound like something different than what it is, but uh, Calvinism is Calvinism. They follow a man who is likely in hell, uh, I believe he is, and it's very false religion. Uh, many false doctrines and heresies come from it here. But, uh, so yeah, I, as I'm learning, I'm just going to teach things, and uh, this video might be short today, but for my birthday, not that long ago, I turned 29, and my mom got me some books, and I got this book by Dave Hunt, one of my favorite teachers, and I don't know if you can see it really well, because all the light shining there, but it's called What Love Is This? It's like a 500 page book, and uh, I'm kind of new to reading through books and stuff. I love reading the Bible, it's my main book that I'll always love, but I love... You know, reading books that help me to learn the Bible more. And uh, so anyways, uh, I'm reading through this and uh, as I learn things, I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, it's a really good book so far. And as I said, it's written by a man named Dave Hunt. It's called What Love Is This? He also has a video of this on YouTube that you can watch. And I do suggest that you watch his videos. Uh, he is one of my favorite teachers. I don't agree with everything that he teaches or everything that he did. Um, I don't agree with the fact that he sold books, that he copyrighted material. That's something that I would never do. Uh, and you know, it's kind of like, well, if you don't agree with that, then why did you buy the book? Well, um, you know, I like to print out articles and I have tubs fill, filled with stuff that I printed out because I can just look up the exact scripture, the, the exact points that I want to look up and print them out and that's really helpful. And I like having this archive of all these things to go through. And uh, But you know, when I can buy a book that's 500 pages with some really good information from a person that I can trust for like 20 bucks versus all the, the money that I would spend on ink and paper to, to print all this out or something, you know, and you can't find this online, but, um, you know, it's just, it's a lot easier, just a quick resource. And, uh, but anyways, I don't agree with everything Dave Hunt did or taught, and I'll go through that sometime, but this will be one of the resources for my teaching. And I would suggest that you check out his videos. And that's one of the good things about Dave Hunt is that he exposed Calvinism and, uh, he's dead now, but also, let's see, uh, I will say David Cloud has a good video on Calvinism as well. Um, you know, maybe not everything that he teaches about that is right, but I also don't like the fact that David Cloud is against, you know, house churches or whatever, and he's all for the, the Protestant church thing, but, you yeah. whatever. Anyways, uh, let's see here. I also think that Robert Reed on YouTube, or uh, Sermon Audio is really good. You can find him on Ser Sermon Audio, Robert Reed. I'm sure he's done stuff on Calvinism as well. And another resource that I'll be using is from a website called Examining Calvinism. And uh, it's a great resource. And what they do is they teach things from an Armen Arminian perspective. And I wouldn't say that I'm really an Arminian. But I do think that a lot of things that they teach on there are really good. And uh, so I'll use that as a resource and I encourage you to check that out, but just be cautious. You know, it's not King James only or anything. And basically all those people that I've mentioned are King James only as teachers, you know, Robert Reed, Dave Hunt, David Cloud. And I would agree probably with most of their doctrines, most of the, the things that I would really uh, consider, you know, the, the basic necessities. Although David Cloud does teach that the sons of God were angels and that's completely stupid and uh, I don't know why. 
he'd do that, but uh, like I said, he's also against house churches, and so he teaches a lot of stupid stuff, but... Um, so, I just want to go over some things briefly and uh, kind of talk about election and calling. And so, election and Calvinism means that uh, God, God elected or God chose who was going to be saved and who was going to go to hell before the earth. Okay, it has nothing to do with man's co cooperation with God. Uh, you know, it's just God chose it. It's a done deal. Um, those who are going to go to hell, they're going to go to hell no matter what because God chose them to go to hell. You know, at the end of Calvinism, we, we, you learn that uh, Calvinism teaches that God is the author of sin. And uh, so, so let's see here. As far as election, um, you know, the Calvinism version of election is, is a means to Christ. Okay, God chose, chose already who's going to go to Christ, who isn't. And uh, there's nothing else that they can do about it. God does all the work of salvation. Uh, but the biblical view of election is that uh, Christ is the means to election. So God already foresaw, he, he already foreknew the future. God knows all things, including the future, despite of what open theists, heretics will teach, which I'll, another theology that I'll refute that is false, which is basically like an extreme Arminianism. And anyway, so God does know the future, and God foresees, foresaw the future before the earth, and he knew who would believe in Jesus, and whoever would believe in Jesus, he elected or chose to be saved and to be conformed to the image of his son, okay? So there's still that cooperation that man has to, to choose to believe in the Lord. Um, so election for Calvinism is a means to Christ, and for the biblical teaching, Christ is the means to election. And so there, there's also a sense of election as in electing for, for service, and we'll see that. Um, so, but this is more about the calling. I want to talk more about the calling. And uh, Calvinism, there's basically two different kinds of callings that they'll teach. There's an effectual call, and an, a, an infectual call, and an, and an effectual call. Okay, so the infectual call is to the alleged non-elect goats, and the effectual call is to the alleged eternally elect sheep. So in Calvinism, God already chose who's going to be saved and who's going to go to hell. So the effectual call is that at a certain point, God will call those who he already chose to salvation to believe in Jesus Christ. And, and the ineffectual call is basically pointless. It's a call to those who he already chose to go to hell that they're not going to respond to this call, and it's completely worthless. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but the biblical teaching is that there are still two different kinds of calling. And one is that God, God's call, one is God's call of everyone to live in Christ, that is to become saved. There's the call to repent and to, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is one calling. And, and, and man has a free will to reject that or, or to respond to that. And there's another calling, and it's God's call of Christians to live for Christ, that is, their vocation in Christ, okay, for their service. So, let's see here. Now I'm going to read 2 Peter. Um, the title of this, I put 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 verse 10 but really we need to start at this whole passage will start at verse 5 so second peter chapter 1 verse 5 says and besides and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity 
For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, ye shall never fall. So, so there are two different calls. There is one to live in Christ, the call for salvation, uh, and then there is the call to live for Christ, which speaks of the purpose that God has for you as a Christian. The perspective of 2 Peter 1 verse 10 is that this refers to the second call, the Christian calling, that is the call to live for Christ based upon the purpose that God has for you as a Christian, being uniquely gifted by the Holy Spirit for the edification of the body of Christ and for the evangelization of the lost. Okay. To make one's election sure is to fulfill the responsibility that comes with the election, not to somehow be sure that one is among the elect. Okay, so this is speaking of service. It's our Christian calling for our purpose in Christ. Okay, how can we make this certain? When we practice these things, that is when you practice diligence, moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, you can properly cl uh, collaborate for what God has in store for you. Not doing those things will take you off course for what God desires and intends to do with and in you. So this is, this is speaking of the calling in Christ for service, as somebody would say, you know, I feel that this is my calling to do this or to do that. Okay, this is, that's what this is talking about. So we need to get this out of our minds that 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 has anything to do with salvation. This is talking to people who are already, you know, believed to be saved. This is their calling for God's purpose. And I want to go over a couple of verses to show... Uh, that also speak of this kind of calling. And there's, there's a few of them, but I'm only going to go over a couple of them. And so one is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthily of the vocation wherewith ye are called. The vocation, okay? The, the specific job or task that God has called you for in, in service to Him. That's what that's talking about. And Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Okay? Called according to His purposes. Okay? For a vocation, for, for service for Him. So that's what 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 is talking about. So I hope, I hope this helps you understand some things, you know, about how Calvinism is false and... and the real true interpretation of Second Peter chapter one verse ten, and Lord willing, there'll be many videos on Calvinism, and I might go back over things, but it'll be it'll get really deep in the end, and I'll go over John Calvin himself and the history of all this. But I really want to go over the verses, how they interpret them, and what the true interpretation is, because that's really what matters, and uh, that we learn how to interpret the Bible correctly and defend true Bible doctrine and refute false teachings. So that's what really matters. Um, so, thanks for watching, and God bless. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.